Hello and welcome to the CCAT 7 Parent Caregiver Information Session. My name is Melanie Benedet and I am the facilitator for gifted programming with the DDSB. The Durham District School Board acknowledges that many Indigenous nations have long-standing relationships, both historic and modern, with the territories upon which our school board and schools are located. Today, this area is home to many Indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island. We acknowledge that the Durham region forms a part of the traditional and treaty territory of the Mississauga of Scugog Island First Nation, the Mississauga peoples, and the treaty territory of the Chippewas of Georgina Island First Nation. It is on these ancestral and treaty lands that we teach, learn, and live. This statement was co-created in partnership with the Mississaugas of Scugog Island First Nation and the Chippewas of Georgina Island. The Durham District School Board recognizes Indigenous rights are distinct. In the exercise of those rights, Indigenous staff and students shall not be subjected to the actions with the aim or effect of depriving these distinct rights. The Durham District School Board is committed to learning and working environments that centre human rights and equity and are safe, welcoming, respectful, equitable, accessible, inclusive, and free from discrimination. Here are the objectives of today's session. We are going to discuss the common characteristics of gifted learners, Explain the screening process used to identify gifted learners in the DDSB, present program options for gifted learners in the DDSB, and provide answers to some commonly asked questions. This is the Ministry of Education's definition of giftedness, an unusually advanced degree of general intellectual ability that requires differentiated learning experiences of a depth and breadth beyond those normally provided in the regular school program to satisfy the level of educational potential indicated. Here is a brief overview of gifted characteristics. All children are diverse, therefore not all gifted learners exhibit all characteristics all of the time. Some common characteristics are unusual alertness, even in infancy, rapid learner, puts thoughts together quickly, excellent memory, unusually large vocabulary and complex sentence structure for age, advanced comprehension of word nuances, metaphors, and abstract ideas, enjoy solving problems, especially with numbers and puzzles, often self-taught reading and writing skills as a preschooler, deep, intense feelings and reactions, idealism and a sense of justice at an early age, a wide range of interests, and interest in experimenting and doing things differently. Here are the four phases of gifted testing with the DDSB. Phase one, nomination forms are submitted by 9 p.m. on October 11th. Phase two, group level testing, the CCAT, is administered the week of November 4th to 8th. Phase three, individual testing as needed. Phase four, parent and caregiver information sessions with host schools and placements offered. Parent and caregiver nomination information. This will be emailed home to all grade three students it may be requested from school by parents and caregivers of students in grades four to eight. The nomination forms are to be electronically submitted before October 11th at 9 p.m. Late nominations will not be accepted. Phase two, group testing. The Canadian Cognitive Abilities Test, CCAT. The CCAT is a time group assessment and is administrated by a special education resource teacher at your child's school. It is the most common screening assessment used throughout the GTA. Is an assessment for learning potential and factors that are associated with learning in school. It does not test the curriculum taught in the classroom, but measures reasoning skills and problem solving abilities that are common to a number of subject areas. The test focuses on flexibility of thinking and the ability to form relationships. The CCAT is divided into three separate sections that will be delivered on three different days. Each section measures a student's ability to reason using a specific type of ability. These abilities include verbal, quantitative, and nonverbal. The verbal section assesses a student's understanding of the structure of language and relationship between words. It measures the ability to use language for reasoning tasks. The quantitative section of the assessment measures the student's abilities for reasoning and problem solving using numbers and mathematical concepts. Questions in the nonverbal section contain diagrams and pictures. This section assesses a student's ability to reason and problem solve independent of language. How is the CCAT scored? 
The results of the CCAT will contain a score for each section in addition to a composite score. The composite score will combine the verbal, quantitative, and nonverbal abilities. This score indicates the scope and strength of a student's overall cognitive resources for learning. As mentioned, it is a timed group assessment administrated by the CERT at your child's school. It takes place the week of November 4th. It takes a total of 90 minutes to complete and is conducted over three separate sessions. Students are expected to work independently. In-person students will write at their home school. DDSB at home students will also write at their home site school. This is the school they would be attending if participating in in-person learning. CERTs will email families the dates and times of testing. It will take place during the regular school day. Transportation to test location for our DDSB at home learners is the responsibility of the family or caregiver. Please arrive on time as the test will begin promptly. All students must write the assessment in person. Students may write in a group setting with mixed cohorts of students. Health and safety protocols will be followed. Some considerations are as follows. Students with an existing identification. Students with an existing identification can have the accommodations on their IEP put in place for testing. Extra time cannot be given to complete the assessment, but more frequent breaks can be given if stated on the IEP. English language learners. The CCAT is only available in English. Some accommodations can be offered if the learner has the following profile. Newcomer students who arrived to Canada within the last four years. First language is a language other than English and they are currently on the step continua. If you are unsure whether your learner meets these requirements, connect with your child's current school cert. CCAT results. The results are sent home in January. Students scoring at the 98th percentile or above are eligible for gifted identification, IEP, and or placement in the gifted program of the subsequent school year based on availability. Students who score between the 95th and 97th percentile are eligible for phase three and will receive an invitation to participate in individual testing. It is important to return invitations to participate in individual testing as soon as possible for booking purposes. Phase three, individual testing. For students who fall within the 95th to 97th percentile, they will be administered the WISC. This is done so by a qualified psychologist, psychological associate, or psychometrist. It takes about one to one and a half hours, and there is no written component. With the results from the GRU testing and the WISC, students must achieve at the 98th percentile or higher to be identified as a gifted learner. Phase four, information sessions and placement offers. WISC result letters will be sent to schools along with invitations to program information sessions for students who qualify as gifted. Information sessions from home schools will be available mid-March. How to prepare your child for the gifted testing. No study or preparation is recommended or needed for the CCAT or the WISC. Parents and guardians can help by ensuring their children have a good night's sleep and a healthy breakfast on the day of the assessments. A positive attitude always helps. What happens if my learner is gifted? There are two program options with the DDSB. Option one, the student remains at their home school. An IEP is developed identifying the student with giftedness. They will be provided with some opportunities for differentiation and enrichment when mastery is demonstrated. Option two, student enters a self-contained gifted program. DDSB offers these from grades four to eight. Classmates are all identified gifted learners and the program is designed with the specific need of gifted learners in mind. The gifted program is currently being hosted at the following schools. William Dunbar, Alexander Graham Bell, Jack Minor, Pringle Creek, Coronation Public School, and R.H. Cornish. At the secondary level, the gifted programming can be accessed at Pickering High School, Anderson CVI, O'Neill CVI, and Port Perry High School. What if my student doesn't reach the 98th percentile? All high achieving students, regardless of gifted identification, should be offered opportunities to enhance curriculum. The DDSB does offer a retest option up to two times in the student's educational career. 
parents and caregivers can request nomination forms next September or in any subsequent grade from four to eight. Private testing is also an option. Private testing. Parents and caregivers can obtain the WISC from a certified and licensed psychologist in Ontario. The assessment is then submitted to the facilitator along with a consent form to be reviewed by our head of psychology. Please contact myself, the facilitator for gifted programming for the consent form and to obtain the process for submitting assessment for review. Now we will review some commonly asked questions. Why does the DDSB only offer group testing twice? In the 2016 to 2017 school year, it was decided to offer group testing to students in grades three to eight, no more than twice. Most boards that offer group testing are encouraged to offer it only twice, grades three and grade six, as oftentimes there is not much difference in results if it is taken in subsequent years. The DDSP parents have the option of deciding when they would like their child to participate in it. Is there a French Immersion Gifted Program option? No, there is no dual track program that offers both French Immersion and the Gifted Program. Students can be identified as gifted and remain in French Immersion with enrichment opportunities provided. In the self-contained Gifted Program, Core French is one of the subjects that is accommodated by depth and breadth. Does my learner have to be retested if we don't enter the Gifted Program right away? No, once your learner is identified with giftedness with the DDSB, they may enter the gifted program at any time at the elementary level, depending on space availability. Is there a secondary school gifted program? Yes, it is only partial integration. 50% of courses in grade nine and 10 are gifted with two offered at the senior level. Completion of eight gifted credits is required to earn a gifted diploma. Gifted classes are only offered up to grade 11. What about IB programs in high school? The DDSB does not offer IB programs. For more information on these, please consult the Toronto District School Board or the Toronto Catholic District School Board. What if I move my child to another board after they are identified with giftedness? The results of the CCAT and or the WISC should be shared with the new school board for review by their head of psychology. If your learner was identified gifted from another school board, the facilitator for gifted programming would need a copy of the psychological assessment done as well as a signed consent form to share with our head of psychology. We are planning on moving school boards after group testing is finished. What happens next? We will send your results to your child's DDSB school, so please leave a forwarding address or arrange a contact to pick them up. You will have to contact the new school board to find out options for gifted programming and the process for sending documentation. Some school boards offer the option of withdrawing students from their home school program once a week for enrichment. Does the DDSB have this option? No, the DDSB offers only the self-contained gifted program model at this time. Will this tell me my child's IQ? No, the type of score known as an IQ is no longer used in the large scale assessments and the CCAT does not give IQ scores. CCAT measures developed reasoning abilities that grow with activities in and out of school that challenge students to reason about their experiences. Thank you for listening to this presentation. If you have any further questions regarding this presentation, please email me at the email displayed on the screen, melanie.benedet at ddsb.ca.